you know, in, in bef hey, before that, it was really hard. But now things, um, maybe this process has all helped make things become easier. Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree so, totally. You know, we're still working through paperwork, but uh, it, it's, um, I think it's fine. It's, uh, it's good. It's not good. It's... <laughs> Try I'm going to go get some headset, a headset. How, how is everybody? Lovely to see you all here. Hi. Zarif's here, Sharon's here, Paul's here, Terry's here, and I can see a screen, Terry. So you've got your video working, which is awesome. Lovely to see Katie Bond here. It's in you for ages. Jaya's here as well. Jaya, I can't see you, but, and I don't even know if I can hear you. Now you're, um, Jaya, where have you gone now? Oh, no, there I can see you now, gorgeous. I can see you. That's fantastic. I'm just checking that everybody who's on as a speaker has audio and visual, which is really the most important part, but lovely to see everybody else as well. Troy, Karen, Andrew, Esther, Natalia, Maria's here as well. So we're not waiting on too many others, we're waiting on Angie King. I can't seem to see Angie at the moment. And the lovely Annette Dencham, who won't be far away either. She's just wrapping up another webinar. It's all been crazy. I'm sure all of you would have been on lots of online meetings and seminars and all sorts of things um, recently with what's been going on. Has everybody been having fun with Zoom and learning how to use mm. the new online technology? Yes, very quickly. <laughs> Very quickly, yeah. Exactly. Hey, Lauren, I'm just testing my audio. Oh, awesome. Whoever said that, I can hear you. Okay. It's <laughs> Terry. Terry. <laughs> oh, Terry, awesome. We could see you for a second before as well, so that's really cool. Oh, there you are. Lovely. Brilliant. Well done. And it looks like, Sharon, you've got either you're in a very nice office or you've got your green screen going. Well done. Well, I was just, I was just sharing with everybody how to do a virtual background using yep. Zoom. Yeah. So I was cool. just telling Paula how to do that. <laughs> Brilliant. Very so, good. Angie's here as well. Lovely to see Angie. I always love it when our speakers turn up, which is just the best. We can breathe a nice sigh of relief when everyone's here. Um, now, everyone's jumping on, which is very, very cool. So I'm just going to quickly do some housekeeping. Um, first thing, if you're jumping onto the webinar, unless you're a speaker, i really appreciate it if you could keep your microphone muted uh, because you never know when something's going to happen in the background somebody's going to scream and cry and drop dishes and cough like my husband is doing at the moment. Um, and I will mute when I'm not speaking. I will do the same thing. So if you haven't um, got a, if you don't know how to mute your Zoom before, it's very, very easy. Down the bottom of your screen, you should see a little microphone um, and you can click on that to mute yourself. Um, or in fact, I have the power, ah, 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 and I can mute the as well. Um, so don't panic if you're not sure about Zoom, if you're new to all this lovely technology, do not panic, we can help you out. Um, but that doesn't mean that you should stay muted. Um, there's um, lots of different ways that you can get involved with the um, Tina X online today. And one of the great ways is to use the chat box. And I know that Katie Bond knows about the chat box because there's already a message in there from Katie. So down on the bottom of your screens, there is a little speech bubble um, with three little dots in it and it says chat. So if you click on that, it'll open up a chat box and you can jump in there and you can ask questions. And we've got some amazing speakers on today um, and we would love to share your questions with um, the speakers. If you're a speaker, don't panic. I am looking at all the questions that are coming up um, so I can ask you them that come through. Um, so if you'd like to have a test of that chat box, if you're not sure you haven't used Zoom before, then please make yourself comfortable with it. Um, you can go into that chat box. Thanks, Paul has popped in there. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us, which is lovely. Um, if you want to just type a little message into the app, tell us where you're calling from, which would be really cool. I know this is Tina X replacing the Brisbane event that we had running live today. Um, it's actually, um, Paula, I found it a lot less stressful today running this online than the normal live events. Normally we're running around like headless chooks on a day like today, getting a standard up, trying to catch up with everybody, um, and doing that fabulous stuff that we all love, you know, getting to know people, meeting them and hugging them, which we aren't allowed to do at the moment. So, um, so you're all getting lots of virtual hugs today on Tina X because we do um, we do miss that ability to catch up with people. We can't wait until um, everything is back to normal. I'm going to put it in speech commas because I'm pretty sure it won't actually be the normal that we knew. It'll be a new normal um, and we can get back to meeting with each other and especially at the expos. And I know Paul's got lots to share with us regarding recovery, which is going to be something we need to talk about now is preparing ourselves for what the world's going to look like when we come out of this. 
um, Ataya, thank you, Ataya, hopefully I'm saying your name right. Virtual sure, screen showing is mirrored to the words of backwards. Well, that's weird because when I tried to get it going before, the Tina X was round the wrong way and so I flipped it and on my screen it's round the right way. So please tell me, is the Tina X back to front? Back yeah. to front. It's def definitely back to front? Yes. Wow, that's yes. really weird. That's so odd. Okay, well, I'm going to change that because I, that's the sort of thing that would annoy the pants off of me. Uh, tools, I'm going to rotate that back the way I had it. Here we go. Mm. And I'm going to change that. When I went on and tested that, so there you go, guys. Testing out the green screen technology, Sharon, a little bit further when it's not just an image, when it's something with a logo on it. Yeah, um, when, it, when, it's a, when it's a logo um, or any word, because of Zoom, it does a mirror image. So even if you've got a green screen, so... Hence why I have a virtual office, because I, I found that out the hard way myself. <laughs> well, I was really sneaky, and I ended up doing um, like a, um, uh, I flipped it and put it up back to front so that yeah. I could see it reading right. So it should be right now, guys. So hopefully perfect, it's completely back to front to me, but as long as it looks right now. Thanks, yeah. Ashley, for letting me know. Um, Angie said hello to everybody. Maria's here as well. I said hello from Brisbane. Um, Oksana, I've got it right, Oksana from Sydney, lovely to see you here, Mona, don't know where you are Mona, but lovely to see you, good Thursday to you as well, Michelle from, uh, from uh, Brisbane as well, so please feel free to use that chat box um, and ask questions as you go through, what I would suggest you do, particularly for this webinar, because we have an amazing panel of incredible speakers, is when you do ask a question, can you please tell us who you want to ask that question of? So we're going to introduce the speakers in a minute so you know who it is um, that you're speaking to. But if you'd like to just say, so here's a question for such and such, be it Terry or Sharon or Zarif or Jaya or myself, Paula, Annette um, or Angie. Those are the speakers we have today. Um, please put in there who the question's for. Um, if it's for the whole panel, we may not get time to get through everybody. So um, there's some specific topics today that you might have particular questions for people that would be great so for those who have just joined us wonderful to see you all here thank you so much for joining us if you can mute your microphone unless you're a speaker that would be really cool um, just so that we don't get any background noise and, and things like that happening that would be very cool um, just gonna mute a few people who haven't muted um, just as they're coming on so if you don't understand zoom don't panic I am I have the power to mute you in the background <laughs> so that's all very fun and games uh, most of you have, which is very cool. Thank you so much. So a great big Brady Bunch here. Um, I don't know whether you're seeing the whole screen or just yourself, whatever. You can change the view. If you want to see everybody, which is always nice to say hello to people, um, you've got a little view box at the top. I've got it on speaker view, uh, which will automatically flip to the person who's speaking, but you can change the view if you want to. Have a play around in Zoom while you're on it, guys. Um, if you haven't used Zoom before or you're new to the technology, it's a great way to learn. It's just to get out here and have a play with it. So what we're going to do today, a bit of an agenda just to help you out. We're going to introduce our speakers. Um, I haven't seen the lovely Annette Dencham on here yet. Hopefully she won't be far away, but we're going to kick on and I'm sure she will join us shortly. Um, who's my, our co-host today. Um, but just to introduce myself, I'm Lauren from the Audacious Agency and my partner in shine, Annette and I specialize in helping people stand out and be found and be seen as the leader in your space. Um, our specialist areas are professional uh, personal branding and also publicity. We also help people enter, win and leverage awards. And if you're a best-selling author or want to be, we also help you with marketing your book and marketing your personal brand as an author um, and helping you with your online authority so you're seen as a respected leader. So that's what the Audacious Agency is all about. Time to get out there and shine. And today is really, um, with Tina X, something that we are really passionate about. We love helping women in business specifically. Nothing wrong with you guys in business. It's awesome to have you here as well with us. Um, but for whatever reason, um, we seem to feel and seems to happen and the research seems to show that women tend to suffer more from the itty bitty shitty committee than the boys do. Um, you guys just tend to get out there and I know the male brain has different compartments and different boxes and work and business and friendship and all these things are all separate things. For women, it's not the case. We take things very personally. Um, we really aren't great at supporting ourselves. We're not particularly good at patting ourselves on the back. We often go onto these Zoom calls and are constantly worried about, is my hair right? Um, rather than what we're actually saying in our expertise. Um, guys, you don't have that much hair, which is lucky for you. Um, so you don't have as many concerns as us girls in business. Um, it's just the way of the world. So we're here, Tina X is here to help, um, especially women in business, but anyone in business who's got a small to medium enterprise and you're really looking at what can I do 
to get myself out there, either to get the confidence or the productivity or the planning or the tech or the expertise or whatever it is you need to make sure that your business is seen and it's successful. And it's been part of the Small Business Expos for a long time now. Um, and Annette and I are very, very proud to be part of it. Thank you, Paula, for including us with what you're doing with the Small Business Expos. Just extraordinary. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce the rest of our speakers. I've got some little um, introductions here. And what I'd like to do is, as I introduce each speaker, I'd just like you to wave your hands so that we know that we're talking about you, so the people that are watching this can see who you are. Uh, just so that we um, are in the right place. So I'd like to start with Terry Cooper. Um, Terry is here somewhere, and you, your camera turned off at the moment, love. You might want to turn it back on. Um, Terry works with the Brisbane City Council. Um, she is um, an economic development officer there, and she's working with the liaison around trying to make sure that the councils are engaging with businesses properly. She meets with small business owners on a regular basis, providing them with information on what the council is up to um, and what initiatives they have for small businesses and what they can do to help you. And she's also involved with hands-on interactions with small businesses that are participating in council events and using their facilities. And I've got something to share with you today that Terry sent to me. If you are doing that, there's some awesome um, things that the council's doing at the moment just to help you out. Um, with what you're doing to try and maintain your business. So lovely to see you here, Terry. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And Terry's going to be talking about, you know, what the council's doing for small business, especially the council in Brisbane. So if you're outside of the Brisbane area, um, you might want to learn from Terry what she shares today and take it back to your own council and say, hey guys, um, this is what Brisbane's doing. We want some of that as well, please. So um, feel free to do that. Next on my list is the lovely Sharon Davies from Sales to Success, and she's the founder of this company and an expert in the field of sales, of course. She's got over 25 years experience covering all areas of new business, business development, strategic selling. She's worked on top 500 accounts in corporate and education, and she's achieved many accolades and just recently been an uh, international awards judge, which is very, very cool for customer service and sales, um, Stevie Awards internationally. And her real passion is helping others um, and she thrives on sharing her knowledge and helping others to grow. And she's going to be sharing with us how to be confident when you're selling, but really to think about how to do that when times are tough. Because right now, um, most people are pulling in the shingle, um, battening down the hatches, which is not what we should be doing. And it is a hard environment. So Sharon's going to share with us what to do when you're still selling your services and your business um, at that time. Uh, for some reason, uh, Paulie, you're sharing your screen. Thanks for doing that. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to exit full screen and I'll let you turn it off and we'll get a moment. Awesome, thank you. Um, anything will distract me. A bright shiny object, Iris. Uh, but lovely to have you here, Sharon. Nice big wave from you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Hardy is here as well. And Zarif, I can't wait to hear from you. She's a professional presence expert. Where is Zarif? I'm trying to, have I got you? Oh, there we are. Now we're saying your name right, Zarif. It's perfect. Absolutely oh, perfect. For that. It's the only name I yeah. didn't know and I knew I'd stuff it up. So that's perfect. No, well done. Well done. <laughs> so Zarif Hardy is an internationally acclaimed expert in professional presence and business etiquette. So through her workshops, she teaches content ranges of communication and presentation skills. And they all drive tangible business benefits. So she works with blue chip clients across a diverse range of sectors. Um, I've got kids in the background. If someone has kids in the background, if they can mute, that would be really awesome. Um, what else have we got? Um, also, you work within the legal accounting, finance, hospitality, sport, automotive, and, and wholesale industry. So a wide, wide range. And she's going to be talking today with us about managing your reputation. So, you know, how, she's often dealing with the media. She's often looking at what can be done to make sure that your image is right and you're not, you know, doing the wrong things in business. And I can't wait to hear through his inside tips, especially now when we could so easily open our mouth and exchange feet. Um, and it's not good for your personal brand when you say or do something at the moment when there's a crisis happening that could reflect on your business very badly, um, get you some pretty bad um, PR. Um, nice to see you, Rafa. A nice wave from you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, the Pleasure, next thank you. On my list, <laughs> the lovely Angie King. Um, she helps heart centered entrepreneurs to lose the stress and frustration and overwhelm over technology and getting your business online. So, Angie, thank you for being here because you can see a lot of us are floundering and struggling with technology. Some of us have been using it for ages and we're old hacks at it. Some of us are having fun and trying out new things, but let's get sensible, guys. Sometimes it can be the most stressful thing is relying on technology. Angie spent at least 30 plus years teaching thousands of people from all walks of life how to easily use computer programs 
and people think of her as their own tech angel. She gently guides you and empowers you to create foundational business systems and use technology so you can easily see she on the center of the world. Now, that sounds fabulous, but what Angie's gonna really be sharing us with, with us today is how do I do that? How do I get my mess message out there in this current situation where there's so much noise and I simply don't know how to manage my time? How on earth can I be productive with all this going on? So, um, all very well to say, hey, let's all work from home. Um, and someone posted today, I like the fact that their home office is like being in Vegas. They're going through money like it's water. Cocktails are available anytime and no one has any idea what time it is. Um, that's the home office at the moment. So, um, yes, let's get more productive. So, thank you, Angie, for being here. My pleasure. Um, and Jaya, last but not least, Jaya. Um, now, Jaya's had to overcome lots of um, serious hurdles in her life to get where she is today. Um, and she's had to learn about marketing her business with no budget. Um, and growing her own personal brand to create a present for herself as a personal branding photographer. And she's going to be talking about how she got into that. Personal branding is one of my favorite topics, as you can tell. Um, but she's going to talk about the tips to help you be seen, that your image can actually take you places, um, especially when we're talking about what you're doing with your website and your online presence. So thank you, Jaya, for being here to share those insights as well. So now everybody has a bit of an idea on who our speakers are. So if you have a question for one of our speakers, and while I was introducing those people, you might have already been writing down, oh, I'd really like to know something from this person, then please keep that handy in front of you. And as we go through TeenerX today, um, you're gonna be able to ask questions in the chat box. What I ask that you do is put first who it is you're asking the question of, so that I can direct it to the right place so that we can get through in the time that we have. So I'm going to start with the first question that we have on our list for our fabulous speakers. And it's actually going to go to the lovely Terry Cooper to start with. Um, and the reason for that is um, that we have obviously got ourselves into a situation where things are a little bit frantic, a little bit crazy, and we really need to know what the government and the councils and so on are doing to help us. Um, so I wonder if you could perhaps give us a hand, Terry, and tell us what is the Brisbane City Council doing right now to help small businesses and maybe one or two things that small businesses could be doing straight away um, to not overload the system <laughs> which we know is a problem but to get some help or to find out where they can go to, to get help from okay um firstly just checking you can hear me okay awesome yeah okay so at the moment um this week council have announced that they're offering uh rate relief to businesses and residents so obviously at the moment cutting um outgoings and costs is very important for everyone so all you need to do if you are a brisbane resident um, or have a, a paying rates in brisbane is call our um, business hotline on 3403 Double eight, double eight. You can put in at a request to have um, your rates frozen. Um, we also have um, relieved a whole lot of um, fees and charges. So um, things like um, food licenses, um, cafes, um, outdoor charges, things like that. Um, again, you can call 3403-8888 to see um, if the charges that you are paying to council are being waived. Um, and it's also a good place to um, find out what other support is out there as well. Um, so, during this time, obviously, we can't run events, but when we're in recovery mode, we will return to our, our uh, normal screening of programs. Um, so Council offer a large amount of free networking events, um, workshops and educational programs. So if you'd like to be included on that mailing list, all you need to do is reach out and I'll make that happen for you. Awesome. And we'll put Terry's contact details in the chat box or in a URL for that as well. What was that telephone number again, please, Terry? Uh, 3403 Radio. Right I'm just putting that into the chat for everybody in case you need to take a note of that one. Um, that would be really cool. And um, I'm guessing just Brisbane City Council's website as well, probably one of the places to go to to find tips and tools and help from there as well. 
Absolutely. So um, we have a business in Brisbane part of the website. So if you if you just Google business in Brisbane, um, Brisbane City Council, uh, we have a whole array of help that is available, not just from us, but from state and federal government as well. Brilliant. Awesome. And um, I will share my screen here as well, because Terry did send something through to me earlier, if I can find it. In fact, I might not be able to do it straight away until I can actually find what that is. Um, of a list of all the different rebates that are being given back and opportunities for um, councils and so on, and people, sorry, using council um, property and premises. I do now have that screen open, which is good. Um, let me just see if I can share it with you. Here we are. So they've waived a lot of the fees and things um, for. Um, for example, here, footpath dining's waived because a lot of the cafes and restaurants, of course, are closed. Um, outdoor dining can get credits of prepaid invoices um, and they won't pursue unpaid invoices. So lots and lots of bits and pieces here. So if you're already using some of these council services and you've previously been paying uh, for permits and things, you might want to check out what's being waived at the moment and what refunds are available to you. Terry, did you want to say anything else while I have this on the screen? Um, probably not about that but there is there's almost an overwhelm of information out there about um, what grants are available what assistance is available um, i would encourage people to go to the source of truth which is in queensland is um, business queensland.gov.au and for federal information is um, business.gov.au. So on both of those pages and also on Council's um, Business in Brisbane page, you'll find a whole list of information of where you can go to get help. I think the challenging thing at the moment is that there's different help available depending on your business structure, whether you employ or don't employ. Um, so you really do need to spend some time reading information on these sites, um, just to understand what you are entitled to, what you can access and what you can't. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, it's very good. You're quite right, Kerry. Right at the moment, we're getting so much information and it changes every five minutes, it feels like. Sometimes we just want to turn the news off and not even think about it and get on with what we're doing. So, um, so very, very good point. So I've put those website URLs into the chat box. Um, and I, before we finish today, I will give everybody an opportunity to save the chat box. So don't Great. panic. If you're madly writing things down, don't panic. I will show you at the end how to save the chat box. You can go back. Um, and find those important links. That um, Lauren, if I can just add uh, something else, the small business one-on-ones that I've always done are still available, but obviously it's by phone these days. Yeah. So if anyone in, um, who lives in the Brisbane Council region is interested, um, they just need to shoot an email to smallbusiness at brisbane.qld dot gov dot au and we will sort out a time for a one-on-one -on -one phone call brilliant i've added that email address into the chat box as well guys so that's uh absolutely a huge service that terry offers and i think terry this has come from years and years of you understanding how small business operates just to be able to sit and talk with somebody who has got the right information who is is running alongside what's going on in small business but also what the council are doing um, it might save you a huge amount of stress and effort and time just to have a chat with, with Terry, get really clear on a few things and at least get some momentum happening. So um, thank you, Terry, for that. That's fantastic. Pleasure. Now, we will come back to Terry. If you've got any questions for Terry at this point, please pop them in the chat box and we'll come back to Terry in a minute. I'd like to move on to our next fabulous speaker on the Teen Rex couch today, the fabulous Sharon Davies, uh, because right now, Okay, so we're, we're managing to work out how to survive in business, but more importantly, how do we keep selling the fact that we are still in business? Even if your business has had to close its doors physically, or there's something else that you've had to do, um, you still should be out there promoting yourself and getting your brand out there um, for when things come back to recovery. I'm sure Paula will be sharing a little bit more about recovery later on. But Sharon, what I'd like to know is, um, you know, what is the story with selling through tough times. I'm pretty sure you've had this same experience in being resilient 
um, in tough times. So, so how do we continue selling when there's challenging times afoot? Thanks, Lauren. Um, I think being resilient, um, yes, it's definitely something I've gone through, uh, which I did a post the other day, which might, a few people might have seen. So um, I, I was, I have gone through the GFC. I have been made redundant four times. So talk about resilient. You've got, you've got to have resilience and have broad shoulders, I guess. Um, that's the first thing. When you're selling, it's about telling your story and active listening when you're engaging. And it's also about having a plan and having your purpose. So um, as a lot of you know that I actually deal with a lot of face-to-face -face clients, now it's about doing online. So the process of selling is still the same. So if you're talking to clients on a one-on-one, -on -one, it's still the same, but you need to have a know your product and know your services. And is it answering the problem in the market now? That's probably the first thing that I would definitely say. Um, are you solving a problem? It's, it's still the, the number one thing. Are you solving the problem? And are you targeting the right people for your audience? So I know the other speakers will have the marketing strategies there, but it's still the same with the sales strategy. Reach out and talk to your clients. Do it via Zoom. Um, and I guess one of the other tricks is, you know, having a virtual background that they're not seeing your home offers that, you know, it, it makes it still look professional and you're still approaching it in a professional way right. when, when you're selling. So, um, what's... Okay. Sorry, I just muted someone who was talking. Okay. So you're all good? Carry on, Sharon. Carry on, good. Um, I think the other thing is with your selling, you know, have your purpose, but also have your plan. And also when you're working at home, um, I actually teach a methodology of gridding your territory, right? This is for sales reps when they're out on the road. It is the same for you working at home. It's having your plan. And I mean, you all know about Lauren's um, audacious planner, which I use always, but also I have a territory plan that of how to use that from your Monday to Friday. So it's also scheduling your times as well for your clients. So clients still want to talk to you. People still need to have that interaction. So using Zoom, is a great way of doing your meetings. Um, but also, if you're going to do a PowerPoint presentation, uh, one of my partners in my business can help you with getting your wording into um, a presentation because a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of people out there going, yes, I do this, I do that. And they're putting a lot of words on paper, but not taking people through the learning path. You know, you have a gateway of learning and it's the same when you're selling. You know, when you've got a product, you know, so if you need help with that, please reach out. I have a business partner that can help you get all those words into a visual model that's really simple with your PowerPoint presentation. And it's about engaging, engaging, listen, active listening. Um, and I think, and planning your day, your week is so important because people still want to know you. You know, you are an expert in what you do. Brilliant. Thank you. So that's a really good point that you make, Sharon, around understanding what is the problem that you're solving in the marketplace? And it's a pretty, I mean, you think it's common sense, wouldn't you? That it, look, if there's not a problem and you're trying to, trying to sell to that, no one's going to want to buy because they don't want to fix it because it's not seen as a problem. So I wonder whether for everyone who's on the call today at Teen Rex, um, have a think right now about what's the number one major problem that you solve. Um, and if, if you can figure that out and then work out, well, in the current climate, why is it such a problem? What are people doing to try to solve it? And how can you help them to do that? So really go back to basics, I think, Sharon, is what you're suggesting, isn't it? Is look, you know, Absolutely. it's about being human, isn't it? Listening, finding out how you can help people, but more importantly, identify it with your business. And it was something we talked about the other day in another webinar that we ran. This might just be a time in your business where you cull stuff that hasn't been working. And if you're honest with yourself, it might not have been working for a while and you've struggled with it and you've continued to push ahead and try and force it to happen, now might be a really good time to review what the services are that you provide or the products that you provide and what the problem is that you actually solve and whether it's still relevant, whether people actually want your solution. And if they don't, are you gonna pivot? Are you gonna adapt? Are you gonna change what you're doing? You know, what can you do to really review so that as we get out of this and back into normality, you've already got a plan in place. So Sharon, what might be some things that people could do um, to really engage with people, especially like say online, offline, what are some of the tips and tricks and things 
to do, especially with that first interaction with people? Yeah, I think it's like um, when you're doing a post, and this is something that, I mean, I use LinkedIn quite a lot. Um, that's where a lot of my clients are. And it's actually filtering and knowing where your target audience is. Yes, Facebook, I help out as well. Um, but when somebody actually, when you do a post and someone is actually liking your post or they make a comment, going to the message and then start engaging, that would be anyone that likes your post, that would be my first tip. And any comments that they make, start engaging and start then, you know, and then if you're going to reach out to connect with that person, make sure you've got a plan, right? It's like the five P's that I always talk about. Have a plan of what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, but also listen to what they're saying back. Um, the beauty of LinkedIn is that there's a little microphone uh, in the message um, when you do it and you can actually hold the actual microphone on, say what you want to say and start getting engagement. It's quite, it's really unique in that way and you'll find that you'll get a lot of engagement with that. But just be honest, have a purpose and a plan of your call and active yeah, love to that client. Yeah, so you can do a virtual, a virtual message or a voice message via LinkedIn now as well, which is very, very cool. Especially if you're not good at spelling or if you, get, <laughs> if you can't type as fast as what they're typing, it's a really quick and easy way. So that would be definitely that trick. And if you're going to also sell your services, um, just make sure that they've asked for that. Um, what I'm also finding is that a lot of people are just throwing content out there of their presentation and everything and not even, um, you have like, a, what, I'm trying to use the wording, um, you have a sort of a duty of care of your business and I think marketing and probably, Jay is probably going to talk about this, is that don't keep throwing everything out there. If you've got engagement, then, you know, act on that and it's just like if you were face-to-face -face with that client, Think of it as you're face-to-face, -face, but you're online now. Would that client really want to see that if they haven't asked for it? Remember, you've got to solve that problem. Yeah, nice. And it's interesting, isn't it? Um, years ago, we didn't used to be able to just talk to clients like this on social media and, and on Zoom calls. It was all one-way traffic. Um, so unless you had a face-to-face -face meeting with them or a phone meeting with them. So yes, you're right. Um, making sure we're just thinking about what we're doing and being a bit human in what we're doing as well, which is very, very cool. We're going to come back to Sharon with some other questions. If you've got questions for Sharon, please pop them into the chat box. And I'm happy to pitch those to Sharon so we can put her on the spot and ask her some more questions in a minute as well. Now we're going to um, just have a quick chat with the lovely Zarif Hardy, um, who has obviously had a lot of dealing with the media as she's been growing her business. Um, Zarif is a professional presence and business etiquette specialist. Um, so, Zarif, I wonder, now that we're talking about, okay, you're getting out there, you're making these connections, you're talking with people, and you're creating these engagements with your clients, how can we start to really engage with the media, especially now, when it seems that everything that's getting into the media is about coronavirus, and we cannot get in edgeways with any other message, it seems. So, have you got some tips, Zarif, on how we can really engage with the media through your experience? Well, my first recommendation at the moment is really about following some of these leaders in the media. I don't know if anyone follows someone like Carl Stefanovic. Now, he of late has put out small businesses, get in touch, let me know a little bit about you. So start following the major leaders, start commenting in their Instagram feeds, their Facebook feeds, to let them know that you are there and active. Um, you know, you could obviously go beyond that and maybe email them some information, but look, to start with, build the relationships and, and make sure that your profile really complements uh, the brand that you are selling to them or, or, you know, wanting them to share. The next thing is the minute you get a slight little bit of engagement, go beyond the call of duty. So if, 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 you know, if someone asks you, oh, look, I'd like you to comment on this or, you know, can you provide us with some answers to these questions for this article or this media thing, then give them more and, and always, always follow up. I mean, a lot of the relationships I've built to become the go-to person in a lot of media, um, you know, whether it's magazines or print or radio, is that I haven't just done the interview and said, thank you. I followed up with, you know, a thank you email, even a handwritten note. All these things that make you memorable, that, that keep that relationship flourishing. So you are that first person that they think of when they want answers around that subject. But no, at the moment, follow every media person on Instagram um, and, and really comment on their feeds because they're the ones that take the stories. So what you're talking about, Zarifa, is really identifying the people who are in social media who are already in the media. 
So it's the people who are like yes. Koshi and uh, what, are there a couple of others that you, you follow, the ones that you really like? Even, even some on um, writers in magazines. Um, radio, I get a lot of work on radio and I follow all of the, the people like ABC. I follow the announcer in every little time slot and I comment on, on everything that they're posting. So, so all of those, think of, think of print, think of radio, think of TV. Brilliant. Love it. And um, in terms of business etiquette, just from a, a professional point of view, um, can you comment a little bit on how we engage with people as well? Because I think we've got Terry, who's offering obviously one-to-one -one calls with people, which is fantastic engagement. Sharon talking about, you know, active listening and so on. Is there a tip that you can give to us just to help us make sure that we aren't really stepping on toes and doing all those sorts of crazy things when we're trying to engage with our audience as well? So my first step is, I think Sharon just mentioned it before, about be professional. Mm -hmm. No matter if you are sitting at home in a sloppy environment, don't look sloppy. Don't speak fast and nervous and quick. Take your time. Remember, most of our communication is visual and it's how we sound. So it's really important to still look. I mean, you don't have to be in a jacket and a suit, but you know, look professional, represent the, the, the brand that you are selling and what you are in business doing. And then when it comes to the way that we speak about our product, articulate, speak a little bit slower. When we sound really rushed and we're going fast, we almost can put people on edge and they're missing information. So think about those levels of professionalism to start with, that, that your actual visual packaging um, is, is congruent, polished and professional because those first impressions are made really quickly. We, we do check out when we visually look at something and it looks sloppy. It looks like you haven't bothered. It doesn't look trustworthy. So think about all those elements that come into how we're visually coming across and then obviously, you know, the vocals and, and everything else that goes with it. Brilliant. Love it. And uh, I do agree with you. It's, it's funny, isn't it? It's that saying you can't judge a book by its cover, but that's exactly what we all do. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, be authentic. Don't, don't put a fake you on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And often on these sorts of calls, you can't put a fake you on because it is no. true. It's like, even with a green, I mean, my green screen behind you is not pretty in my office, but you're right. It is that first impression. And it's great to have great online presence, to have a website, to have all these things happening. But if you then don't back that up by being professional in the way you behave, it's going to reflect particularly badly, isn't it? So Absolutely. thank you for that. If you've got any questions for Zarif, please pop them into the chat box for us and I'll pass those on. We'll come back to Zarif in a minute because I've got some other questions to ask her. But what I'd like to do is move now on to um, Jaya because I think it fits really well to flip into, okay, great. So how do you make sure that your professional image coming from a photographer and somebody who understands how to make sure your brand is well used how can you make sure that your image is professional and that you're using it properly? And what other things can we be doing now, especially given that we're having to walk away from face-to-face -face meetings and do a lot more online? Um, so as Zarif said, I think it's really important to present professionally to start off with. Um, I think it's important to sit down, like probably we've all got a little bit more spare time um, than we would like to have. So sit down and think very clearly, what is my brand? Who is my ideal audience? What would I like to say to them? And what would I like them to hear? Or how would I like them to feel when I leave that conversation with them? Um, like right now, photographers are still working. Photographers are feeling quite comfortable, especially to do some outdoor shoots at a distance. So if you feel like you're going to be online a whole lot more, getting those branding photos up and running pretty quickly would be what I suggest. If you can't, um, you know, I'm an immune compromised person, so I'm already in quite an isolating situation. Um, I was due to do my photos a couple of weeks ago and my photographer actually had to cancel a flight to come do them with me. Um, so I will just be working on the brand that I've already created for myself and keeping that consistent. So like I'll be using my iPhone, they won't be professional quality photos, but I'll be keeping it as professional looking and with my brand as I possibly can. Um, so if you're looking at me right now, my brand is all about my lovely color um, that people see 
and think about me. I've met Terry Cooper a few years ago at a breakfast. She might recall I was wearing a dress of this tone. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's all about me and my brand. And as I'm swanning around the park by myself or down the beach by myself, it will always be there so that when it's popping into people's news feeds, they're like, oh, there's Jaya. What's she up to? You know, like it, it's almost like you need to find out what is going to stand you out from the crowd um, and just be seen amongst that. Because as you're scrolling through social media at the moment, there is so much to look at. Um, I think it's really important that you figure out what it is you want people to see and what, you know, what's going to attract them to click on it rather than click on the bad news story. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. And that consistency is interesting, isn't it? We all know about, um, you know, people who choose a particular colour. There are people who choose purple or red or orange and they wear that all the time or it's part of their branding and so on. Um, but I think you're right as well, Jay. If it's not just colour as well, it's the way that you, your photograph, the emotion that you want to create, the backgrounds that you use and so on. Is there anything you can give us in terms of tips for maybe right now as an opportunity for us to be going through some of our photographs that we use for our personal brand image? Um, and what sort of things we should be looking to do? Like, for example, having the same, do we have the same image all over every one of our social media channels or do we change it up and have us in slightly different poses? Um, is it okay to use the one headshot and put it everywhere? Any sort of tips that you can help us with that? Um, once you get that brand message consistent, you don't actually need to use the same message everywhere. Like my advice for customers is like on your LinkedIn, it's going to be a far more professional look. You might just be against a plain wall. Um, you might be wearing, you know, I wouldn't be wearing my nice velvety thing. I would be wearing a jacket. LinkedIn is a more professional space. I'm talking to more professional corporate type people in that space. They want to see that as, even as a creative that I can step up and be a professional person for them. On my Facebook page for the business, um, you know, it would be more this kind of thing. And then on my personal Facebook, it would be a little bit more casual. Um, you know, even if I have an iPhone photo or something like that. But my number one tip, like, is if you're out there taking some photos for yourself now and you're wanting to um, make them be seen, make sure they are clear. Make sure you're turning towards the light. Like, um, you know, photography is all about light. So right now I'm sitting with my back to the window. If I was going to take a photo of myself, I would turn around and the photo would be with that beautiful light coming in on me. Um, so making it as professional as you can with the tools that you have in the situation that you're in, I think is probably important. Brilliant. Awesome. Thank you. And when it comes down to using those images, of course, and what you're doing with that, um, it's all very great to have those things done. And thank you, Jay, for those tips. But what do you then do with them? So I'd like to introduce back in the lovely Angie King um, to perhaps share with us, especially given we are all jumping online at the moment, what sort of skills and or technology do we need right now in order to be successful? What's sort of the, the basics, Angie, that we should all be looking at? Hi, Lauren. Yeah, I am. Um this, at this time of, of our lives, you know, it's so important that we're actually visible. And I know a number of people have said that beforehand, but like we've been saying, there are so many people online and it's really important that we become visible so that we are actually seen. So um, one of those, the tools to do that, um, obviously is Facebook, it's obviously Zoom. There's a number of different options and different technologies, but it's actually about using them. So doing those posts, doing them frequently, doing the stories, webinars, like what can you do to get out there so people see you frequently. You know, sharing your information in other groups, having your own groups, events, there's so much you can do. So being visible is one of the skills that you need right now to get online. Brilliant. And what's sort of the basics, Angie, that you'd think, okay, we need to have, you know, is it at least a website or at least a Facebook page? Or what do you feel right now if people are going, oh my goodness, I've got to quickly get online with my business? What are sort of the, the bare minimums you'd go for? Yeah. Well, I actually have like six things that I would recommend, basically. There's six skills and I've linked them into technologies. So the first skill is to be visible. 
which is really Facebook. Most people have Facebook pages and business pages. The second skill is actually to be accessible. So at this time, when we're doing a lot of coaching online, we're doing a lot of consultations online, we need to be able to be reached 24 seven. You know, it's, it's, we don't have time nowadays to have a telephone conversation and try to work out times or back and forth with emails. So we need online booking systems to get online. We, we need to be able to build relationships. So that means we need to have like email lists. We, we, we really need to have email. If something happens to, to Facebook, for example, what, what do you do? All those connections are absolutely gone. There was um, a, a case just recently on Instagram where the Heal documentary had over 200,000 followers and they closed it down. So can you imagine they were actually emailing saying, hey, they've closed us down. Can you please like our new Instagram feed? So if that happens to you, what do you do? Like if, if your whole business is on Facebook or Instagram or something on social media, you, you're, you're gone, you know what I mean? So you really need to start building those relationships with email. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know um, one of the booking systems we use, just to go back to a previous um, point, Andrew, we use Acuity with the Audacious Agency. There's also Calendly. If there's any other ones that people can suggest, please put them in the chat box. Um, but I know both Acuity and Calendly, you can set it up and it syncs with your calendar so you know when bookings are coming in. You can charge for um, your meetings as well as have free meetings and so on. And you can offer programs and services through there as well. Um, and I also just noticed Michelle O'Hara also noted earlier um, when um, I think it was Zarif was speaking, um, Carl is currently offering Carl's classified Facebook group at the moment to promote small businesses that are up and still running and open. So if you want to go and do a search on Facebook for Carl's classified Facebook group, um, mm -hmm. that's Carl Stefanovic um, here in Australia. Um, he is running a um, small business classified um, area. So you can go and list your business in there. So um, thanks, Angie, just back to you as well and uh, promoting them on channel nine. Awesome, thanks for that, Michelle. She's well and truly on top of this. Um, just back to that as well, um, Angie, what you were saying about um, the importance of building your list. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Do you think now more than ever, people are starting to realize that when we've been talking about databases and list building for years, um, and I know I've been doing that for a marketing point of view, that it's so important to have a lead generator, to have a way of collecting people's emails, that people are starting to realize the power is in the list that they have? Oh, absolutely. You know, in the, in the 90s, it, we only need three pieces of contact to, to actually do a sale. Like it was three touch points, they say. Now they say it's over 20. So we have to be out there. We've got to be writing those emails, building our lists, nurturing, nurturing our clients, nurturing our prospects so that they like, know and trust us because that's where they buy. People buy from people that they like, know and trust. Yeah, you know? yeah. And talking about Calendly, I, I actually use Calendly and, and it does the integration as well. But one of those things is it's just announced that it now integrates with MailChimp. So if people make bookings online in your on your calendar system, they automatically will end up in your email list. So Brilliant. one of my other tips, one of my other tips is actually integration. That's one of the things that most of these systems integrate as well. So that's, it's all about saving the time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. I, was saying, I was meeting with a client the other day and she's been a speaker for many years. Mm -hmm. And I just assumed that she would have a big database because of that. And she hasn't been collecting the email addresses of the people she's been speaking to. So she's probably spoken to close to 30 or 40,000 people over the years and hasn't bothered to collect any of their email addresses. So this, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you've got to keep those relationships going, which is so important. It's back to what Sharon was saying earlier. Yeah. Uh, Sharon also saying you can protect your database on LinkedIn. You can actually download your list and save it as a CSV file, which is very, very cool. So that includes the person's contact details and everything else, Sharon, wonderful. So there's a big tip for you if you've gone into LinkedIn and you're doing lots of following and liking and you've grown a big database, you can download that list as a CSV file and you can use that. And I yeah. guess, Angie, you can upload that into MailChimp or wherever else and you've got an email address to send things out to. So very, Absolutely. very cool. Absolutely. Uh, Paul is saying she's not sure if uh, LinkedIn still allows email addresses as a CSV file. Not sure. I'm not a LinkedIn specialist, but I'm sure somebody like um, Julie Mason um, would be able to help you. And if you're not sure who Julie, Julie Mason is, you can jump into the Rocket Launch Your Business Facebook group, and Julie's one of our gurus in there. 
um, and she's more than happy to help you. She's a LinkedIn specialist and she's brilliant. Um, yes, your email database is the number one asset for your business. So on that point, Paula, I might just bring you on to the call um, and to answer some questions about, tell us a little bit more, because I'm sure there's a lot of people on here who would like to know, why on earth did you come up with this crazy idea of the Small Business Expos? What has your journey been like? And what would you point out as right now as being some of the most important steps small business can be taking to make sure they survive this, but they come out the other side and they recover? Oh, we can't hear you, Paula. Why can't I hear you? That's weird. I haven't got you muted. Can you hear me now? We can. Yeah. Yep. So today we would have held the 2020 Brisbane Small Business Expo today and uh, it would have uh, assisted over 1500 businesses so uh, it's a very sad day not to have it um, and uh, however uh, we are working with our stakeholders which uh, one of those the naming rights is the Brisbane City Council and as you all know there's an election on Saturday <laughs> So we have to wait for the fabulous council to go through the election process, to come out of caretaker mode, to then, um, you know, they're in damage control at the moment. And they honestly, I uh, must say, have been um, one of the best councils I've ever seen in response for small business at this um, critical point in time. But then our focus is recovery. It is all about recovery. And, um, and so the Small Business Expos has been postponed to be part of the recovery process. Um, so the expos were always there, um, starting off to make sure businesses were visible face to face. And quite frankly, I don't think that's gonna change um, anytime soon. We're not gonna turn into robots. We are online more, but um, humanity still needs a face to face interaction and uh, later on in the year uh, we'll need that more so than ever before so um, I, I you know I am now um, have three councils as naming rights sponsors and each one of them are going through their challenges for their small business but not one of them has said oh we're going to pull out Paula they all know their responsibilities for recovery. And, uh, and so we're well with them. Um, but you can also appreciate from our point of view, they have to change so many contracts that are in place with events um, right across their entire regions. It's, it's a massive undertaking. So we're only, you know, one event uh, per region and it just takes a bit of time. But um, from our perspective, uh, we uh, thank, you know, today has been fantastic. Um, the ladies will do it again in real life uh, in the new expo, or the, the postponed expo, and, uh, and we'll continue forward. So um, from that perspective, um, we don't have a lot to, I guess, for us to share in the time of survival. Um, there are many experts with that, but our time um, is certainly for recovery because the expos have always been there for economic outcomes, economic development. Um, so we, and hope, that is why everything's the colour of yellow, the colour of hope. Um, and it has always been about face-to-face -face human interactivity. And, uh, and those things, um, you know, whilst they're not now, they're not today, uh, they will be absolutely needed in the future. Brilliant. Thank you, Paula. Really, really value the fact that you've put so much effort into these. And uh, more importantly, that you've, you've really grown a massive small business community around um, Queensland, which is fantastic. Now, I'd like to introduce my fabulous partner and Sean, the lovely Annette Dencham, who's been waiting patiently. She always does whenever I get onto these webinars first because she can't get a word in each wise. Um, Annette, would you like to share with us? I know you've, Annette's been busy running webinars this morning as well. Um, she was running a repurposing webinar today. So if you've got blogs, how on earth do you get them out there so that it's not like a ghost town. You actually get people reading your content. Um, and we've got links to watch replays and all sorts of things like that in that Rocket Launch or Business Facebook group. I put the link in the chat box to that group. So if you wanna go in there and find all that information and connect with the speakers who are here today, they're all in that group as well. Um, most of them are. Um, the others, if you're not there, please jump in and offer your expertise to help people 
Um, but Annette, what are your big tips for right now? We've heard a little bit from Zarif about making sure that you're in the media. Um, but from a publicity point of view, what's your biggest tip right now for small business and what they can be doing? The first thing I think is to be really wary and aware of your tone and what you're putting out there because now more than ever journalists are using social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn to look for talent, which is what we all are to them. And they're not afraid to shame you and out you publicly if you do something stupid and thoughtless. And now's the time where we need to really be careful about what we're putting up on social media because in the, nobody wants to see themselves as a feature article on news.com because they've said something inappropriate or tone deaf. So I think tone deaf is my, my word for 2020. Um, it's so easy to do. Um, and now's not the time to stop. Um, I'm, everybody has said that in some shape or form. Um, you know, this is why I ran the repurposing webinar today because there's people who've got a stack of content that they can now repurpose and push out um, to use in so many different ways um, and cover a, a wider audience because we are going to get through this. It's a virus. It will go away. They'll find a vaccine. They'll find something to treat it. It'll burn itself out. So recovery is going to happen. It's inevitable. Right now, we're all grieving in a little bit of shock, overwhelmed, and it's hard to see the forest for the trees. But this is a time where we need to start planning of what we're going to do to come out the other end. And if you stop your marketing, even if you, you can't afford your marketing person anymore, you still need to continue to do that. And that's continue blogging, continue pitching to the media. Right now, it's pretty hard to break through the noise of coronavirus. But it's also a really good time to look at how you can provide tips and information that journalists are looking for around coronavirus. If you're a nutritionist, a dietitian, a, you know, health or wellbeing specialist, a psychologist, um, a marketing expert. Every single publication out there is running features on coronavirus and looking for little different shades of grey that they can deliver to their audience because we're hungry for information and we're hungry for a way to move through this. Um, and another really, you, we've, 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 we've got plenty of time now. I mean, I've got more time this week than I thought that I would have last week. And so now's the time to do a little bit of research. Um, like really go back and assess who your target audience is. It may have changed now. Um, you know, you can do a little bit of a stock take of where you are, what your messages is, what you're putting out there, and then go and look at what type of media outlets that you want to tap into and start reading them and listening to them and, and building a relationship with those journalists because um, you, it's it's been said a couple of times over the last hour People do business with people, you know, they build relationships and they do business with people they know, like and trust and journalists are the same. The greater and the deeper your relationship is with them, the more likely you are to get that cut through and, um, and get their attention. Um, to set up Google Alert so you can keep an eye on what's being said and look at opportunities to newsjack. So Newsjack is the, the wonderful skill of taking a story in the current news cycle, looking at how you can contribute and add to that, um, contacting the journalist and saying, you know, hey, actually, here's my two cents on this. And you just never know they'll run it. You know, this is, you know, look, gosh, there's so many words of, that, that are going to be 2020 social distancing. I reckon I'll top that one. But, you know, the other one is like unprecedented. This is unprecedented. So the media are just go, looking for all of those different angles and areas and insights and up the top, down below. And this is a great opportunity for us. But, yeah, my best advice is to take a deep breath grieve a little and then get on with it because, you know, never has been a better time for people to show leadership, to be able to, and I think it's also like when we're talking about being um, tone deaf is that trying to push a three, $4,000 product at the moment, you know, like we're all being told to pivot, aren't we? Pivot is also going to be another 2020 word. We're all being told to pivot. Some of us can't pivot. 
because it's just not possible in our business. But for those who can, I think this is the time to show um, a servant mentality. Is you know, like things like Terex, we put it on online. You know, the webinars that Lauren and I've been doing, and many of you have been putting comp information out there because that's going to lay the foundation for when we're through this for people to remember. You know that. Um, you know, like Angie said, is you used to take three three closes to sell. Now it's like 20. Here's your time to drop your 20 pieces of credibility, inspiring, motivational, useful, helpful content so that when people come out the other end and go, wow, I really, really loved what it was, you know, that Irene was putting out there. And when it's ready for time for people to buy, they'll remember how you showed up and they'll remember how you kept going. But don't stop. Yeah, don't stop. Absolutely. Very motivational. Thank you, Annette. Um, we're all going to go out there and, and nail it today now. So, um, what I'd like to do is for all of the speakers, if you would like to now post into the chat box any URL that you have. And I know, Terry, I've already put a few of your website details in there. But if any of the speakers want to put a URL into the chat box, if you want to get in touch with um, the lovely Paula brand, Sharon Davies, um, who can help you with... Um, selling in today's environment. Zarif, who's just really well connected, but also knows about how to present yourself and, and have your presence really notable, professional. The lovely Jaya, who I'm sure will be able to help you with some guidance and tips and tools around making your personal brand image work for you. Angie, who I'm sure we only scratched the very, very surface of what Angie's capabilities are to do with productivity and managing technology. Um, if you want to get in touch with her. Um, and of course, um, we have the fabulous Annette Venture and myself, um, who else did I miss out? Is there anybody else I missed out who's been a speaker today? I don't think I have. I think I've got all of us there. Um, please, speakers, pop your um, URLs into there so that people can get hold of those people. Um, I'd love to hear Angie's six things. What was Angie's six things? Goodness me, we could probably do a whole webinar just with Angie talking about Angie's six things. Um, and, of course, with my New Zealand accent, that's a completely different webinar altogether. Um, <laughs> but um, please pop the URL in there. And um, I'll now tell everybody how to save the chat box so that if you want to get in touch with any of these amazing speakers, um, if you want to get onto the Rocket Launcher Business Facebook group, if you want to connect with people, I know um, someone was saying, Oksana, I think, was saying, I'm really happy to connect with people on LinkedIn. Um, certainly, you can... Um, get in touch with people on this, but you can save the chat box and it'll give you all those details for everybody. Um, down the bottom of the chat box, if you're in there at the moment, on the right hand side, where you type your little chat and all your message in, there's a little box with three dots in it. If you can find that little box with three dots in it and click on it, and it opens up a little drop down menu, at the very top of that drop down menu, it's got the word save chat. So if you're struggling with that, I will leave the chat box open for a little while yet. We've just about finished our webinar, but this is exactly what it is. There's a, a box there with three boxes. Click on there, click Save Chat, and it will save it as a text document somewhere on your computer. We'll have to go and find where that goes. With mine, it sticks on the desktop. Sometimes it puts it into downloads, but you'll find a little Zoom chat somewhere on your computer. It'll save it there, and you'll get all those links and everything else. I'm just going to quickly bring your attention to a couple of people's um, comments I've got here, Zarif put her um, success um, URL on there to get in touch with Zarif. Um, Annie has a tip on there for Carl Stefanovic's classifieds. Perfect, thanks Annette, you are so good. Uh, Angie King to angieking.com, um, you can click on there. And she's got a gift for everybody, a free gift today, a business mind map. So if you are sitting there a little bit stressed out about what on earth you're going to do and you want a map to help you, Angie has given you a link there. There it is. She's showing it to us. That looks very colourful and very easy to follow. Um, a mind map to get everything mapped out and get your systems and technology in place. Sounds fantastic. Um, Jaya has um, her email there, checking out her online personal branding magazine and contact her at Empire Art Photography. You can certainly have a chat with her about your visual brand. Um, love you're talking about the different colours and how you want to make people feel, Jaya. I'm a big supporter of working on the, the emotional side of your brand. And Sharon Davies, I know you have an offer as well. Um, and I'm assuming yeah. it's on one of those URLs that you've put on there. Yeah, can't see it. 
That, there it is. Awesome. I think Sharon, you're offering uh, it's amazing. Uh, what have we got here? The Stella Sales starter, starter Pack. Limited yeah. spot starts on the first of April, which is next week. It's 198 dollars, and you can work with Sharon to really get your sales going. It includes three hourly, three one-hour online sessions with her. How to engage your customer online? How to plan your sales growth? And how to leverage your sales pipeline? Because uh, we don't want to be leaving this webinar and then going straight onto social media and saying, "Hi, it's me. Buy my stuff." Um, let's be sensible about this. Let's make sure that when we're going out to market and we're going to sustain our business and through this, we're doing it as human beings. Um, when the dust settles, the givers will gain, says Oksana. Absolutely. When the dust settles, I think we're seeing a lot of people's true colours at the moment, which is really interesting. Uh, Paula Brand saying, if you email me your offers with the text, she's going to send them out to the database. So that's really awesome. We've got a great load of people who would love to see your offers. So all the speakers, please get in touch with Paula Brand. I will send out an email to you all with that link as well. Um, thank you from Maria. Great speakers. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you as well to Paula for putting these on. Just fantastic what we're doing. Um, and lastly, I will put on a quick link for you. I'm going to just do it also share screen. Um, Annette and I have been brainstorming with what we can do to help right now with what's going on um, in business. And we have a very, very special program that is available to you all. Um, it's called the Audacious Action Program. And it includes coaching with Annette and I to help you overcome the overwhelm of what's going on out there, become really relevant, newsworthy, be seen and heard for what you're doing. Um, I will put the link to this in the chat box as well. Um, we're here to coach you, not just for the next little while. This is a six-month plan. Um, and Annette and I normally charge $297 each for our hours. Um, so um, this is a coaching plan for the next six months at just 100 bucks a month. So we've made it really, really affordable. I will put that link into um, the chat box. I'll just stop that share so you know what we're offering. If you want to know more about getting some help from the Audacious Agency, it's there to help you. We know that a lot of people are struggling right now. We want to make sure that you're supported. And it's not just tomorrow or next week. This is talking about where we're all going to be in six months' time from here when we emerge and we start to recover into the new normal, which is going to be the daily world of running a small business. Um, please just um, put it in there if you need some help. Um, I've just sent that to the lovely Lisa's got that instead of everybody getting it. <laughs> so now I've put it to everybody. Sorry about that. Um, so there's the link at the bottom to the Audacious Agency Action Program, which Annette and I have just launched. It starts next week as well. Um, and please make sure you get into that. Annette's doing Kung <laughs> Fu here. Surely not everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Um, I've got to get that T-shirt. Um, thanks for Andrew. <laughs> It's been awesome, it's been great to be here. Speakers, if you'd like to sign off, please unmute yourself. Um, say thanks, say bye. So whatever you want to say at the moment, speaker, it's been awesome to have you here. Thank you so much. Anything else anybody wants to offer before we wrap it up? I just want um, to say something, Tina. I just want, I'm sorry, Tina Rex. I'd love to say thank you to Lauren. Thank you to Annette. Thank you to Paula for putting this on for everybody and for the speakers. Um, this is amazing. Let's keep going with this. Well, let's do this every quarter, like every month. Let's do Tina Rex and just let's put it out there. Lauren, fantastic MC, fantastic speakers. Love you all and um, take care, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Lauren, I'd just like to say to everyone, hang in there. Um, we have been through difficult times like this previously with floods and fires and things like that. Um, I know at Brisbane City Council, we're talking every day about what we can do to offer more support to Brisbane businesses and residents. And I'm sure that every other council in Australia is doing the same thing. So um, reach out if you need um, some help or you want to talk to someone um, and please stay in touch and communicate with friends, um, business colleagues and loved ones. Awesome, thank you. Yes, I'm just waiting on the locusts to descend now. As you say, we've had the, fl the floods and the fire and the plague. The locusts will be here next month, <laughs> guys. Um, and then the four horsemen of the apocalypse will be following on their toes. Um, so, yeah, hang in there. Absolutely, everybody. We're here to help. Please reach out in small business. I know it can feel like you are on your own, especially when you're now told to stay at home and not talk to anybody. So please do reach out. Don't feel like you have to do this yourself. Um, there are other people going through this. We're all going through this together. 
And collaboration and connection is one of the most important things that we look at at the moment. Um, and thank you, Terry, for that. Well, the council's doing amazing work. And I mean, you may not like the politicians, but they're having to make some pretty tough cho choices at the moment for us and some big decisions. And I don't think they're getting a lot of sleep. So, um, so like us, we're all in this together. So thank you so much for, um, for being here. Lisa's just mentioned she's having trouble finding the save chat function. So I'll just do that again before we finish up. Thanks to you as well, Katie Bond. Nice to have you saying that. Karen as well. It's been lovely to have you here. Tammy too. And Alyssa and Esther and Andrew. Gosh, it's lovely to have these messages. Um, Lisa, really simple. And again, if anybody else wants to do that now, um, where you've been typing in your messages, all you've got to do is go over to the right a little bit and there's a little box with three dots in it. If you click on that, it'll open up a little drop down box and it's got at the very top, save chat. Um, but what we will be doing, guys, is we will be putting the replay of this webinar onto the Tina X page on the website so that you can re-watch it. And I've saved the chat. Um, I've now done that, save chat. So I will make sure that all those links and the chat is also up as well as the video. So if you want to go back and get that information, you haven't managed to do it, or indeed if you are watching the replay, um, you'll have the chat there available as well. So thank you so much, everybody. Tanya's saying thank you as well. Kim as well. Bernadette as well. Look, lovely to have you all here. Oksana, lovely to have you here as well. Thank you so much to all the speakers, to my fabulous author and um, co-partner in Shine, um, Annette Densham, the fabulous um, author of all these amazing um, events that happen with Small Business Expos and Tina X Paul Brand. Um, thank you so much for being here. It's been awesome to have you here for Tina X online for the first time ever. Um, and we really do look forward to seeing you in person and giving you maybe a handshake or a hug or a high five or a maybe a live long and prosper or whatever it is um, in the near future. Hang in there, take care, and remember, don't stop. You guys have the most amazing gifts and skills and talents that the world needs right now. And you do deserve to be well-known, well-paid and wanted. So get out there and shine. Thanks, guys. Take care, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.